take two and 10 seconds is a long time for me to stare at a timer on my phone before it starts recording. Um, so this is an early draft and it may be the last draft uh, because I'm going to go ahead and post this version of the video uh, unless I get some weird interruption. This narrative is poorly organized and sometimes poorly phrased because I would rather get it out there than concern myself with how you will feel about it. I mostly drink colonial and cult Kool-Aids to demonstrate the dangers. I consider myself a cautionary tale and I caution anyone who pays attention to be yourself, love yourself, support yourself. I cannot tell you the risk will be worth the effort and I will not coerce you to keep trying for longer than you want to try. I recognize that not only, but perhaps especially because I process sensory data slowly, I am susceptible to misinformation, disinformation, and deception. I am concerned that I spread, uh, that I spread these things without intent or appropriate context. Uh, which is part of why I withdraw from social media to my detriment. Uh, see my PTSD meltdown videos, part one and two of ending the stream, and no, I probably won't link to them in the comments. Uh, for reasons I'd rather not rehash here. Uh, I process the world and my experiences within it more slowly than average, and through a cruel-to-be-kind lens. Sharing this particular narrative as a piece in progress may feel cruel to some, um, but my goal is kindness. Part of the reason I preferred live streaming to uploading videos is because I am unconcerned with bringing any project to a polished state. If I expend the energy to polish a piece, it will be brief. Poems and personalizations of petition letters are most of what I write now, and neither often enough. Uh, I used to think, and so this is a quick aside that's not in the stuff, I used to think that I wanted to be a novelist, and that is not for me. Long research projects, not for me. Scholarly article writing, not for me. Whoa. So, that was the shitty intro. Now on to the shitty early draft on topic-ish. I am a survivor of suicide under both interpretations. I have known people to succeed in killing themselves where I have failed. The first time I failed to kill myself, I was an adolescent and I told no one. I'll be 40 this year. Um, so you can math it. I have chosen, often against my will through coercion, and against my better judgment, to continue living. And living for decades past my expiration date has led to some unwise decisions. Um, usually not the ones that people want me to think are unwise. <clears throat> I will not participate actively in suicide prevention advocacy until euthanasia or physician-assisted suicide has been legalized and legitimized for human beings, regardless of health condition, with appropriate mechanisms in place to minimize the abuse of the system for murder. Every system has opportunity for abuse, so the goal should be to minimize it but not violate people's rights by not making the system available. Um, right now, my understanding is that most places where physician-assisted suicide is legal, it is still limited to the terminally ill. I have not done the research today or this week. Um, because I'm trying not to, not to be in that space, but to share my experience. Um, I did not do 
any research for this post. I'm not linking to things. This is from memory. Um, a good death option. I do want to note that the good death, um, if you search on YouTube, ask a mortician. That's where I pulled the phrase good death. Um, I've read two of her books and I love her. Um, and I'm moving on. Um, back, to, back to the script. Back to the script. A good death option is only available to people already dying? No. It's a start, but it's delaying justice and infringing on the inalienable right to the pursuit of happiness for a lot of us. A right to life and a right to the pursuit of happiness are both null and even insulting and harmful to some of us with such Puritan white supremacist limitations on the pursuit of happiness and without a right to death. Without a right to die, sorry. My sexual orientations are polyamorous and pansexual, both of which I understood decades before I had useful meaningful language um, or spaces I considered safe to talk about. Um, those things. Like lunchtime, safety is an illusion. Look at, look at there, not, it's been a long time since I've done a lot on camera and so now I'm looking at my eyes and not your eyes. Um, but I wanted to look at your eyes to make a Douglas Adams reference. Um, like lunchtime, safety is an illusion. Occupational safety, doubly so. As a preteen, I wanted to be and be with the women of the 900 numbers on late night television and to write for a sassy teen beat style magazine and lots of other things. Um, but those are the, the relevant ones for here. Um, and that this is an organizational issue because I don't have a really good transition to the next part. Um, in some parts of the United States, uh, like North Carolina, the last time I checked, killing myself is legal. But seeking a doctor's assistance or a doctor providing assistance in the process is not. And the stigma against suicide makes some people feel justified in arguing that killing a self causes enough harm to others to justify subjecting a person to life against their will. The fuck? No. This extends the right to life a little too far for my taste. No person outside of myself should have an inalienable right to my life. Fuck that. Suicide prevention organizations are almost as abhorrent to me as conversion therapy programs. And I wrote a letter recently supporting um, I shouldn't have brought it up because I didn't look at it. Um, North Carolina has a, a series of bills finally to to protect LGBT people instead of the fucking ridiculous I did not need to rehash all of that HB2 shit sorry focus refocus refocus huh and I'm not gonna make it because it's gonna stop because I'm gonna run out of battery um all right the time I came closest to becoming violent toward my neighbor across the street was when he told me it gets better in response to my venting when asking once how I was doing. I'm not sure whether he knew he was quoting a suicide prevention organization's slogan at me or not. Regardless, it was an unwelcome interaction. I don't like for people to ask how I'm doing because I don't like to lie. I don't like to spread my toxicity. And I don't want people to take the rare moments when I can offer a positive response out of context to create an illusion that I don't live on the brink of harming others most of the time I'm awake. 